Monty, where are we headed today? Going for a ride? Yeah. And where are we going? We're going to Zor Valley. So that should be fun, huh? So I guess they're ready. All okay. right, let's go. Okay, we're going. I'm Randy and I'm Diane we're Zephyr's Travels and this week we are coming to you from the Zor and this is in Zor Valley and we're at the Zor Valley 4th of July bash rally and it's being hosted by our club members Don and Boyd and this is the second year that they've hosted this rally um, it is really probably one of the most fun rallies we have. It's kind of limited to the number of people we can have because we're on their private property and they've only got so much yard, but we haven't filled it yet. Um, but we just have a, a, a really great time. So we started out our, week, our weekend here with a tour of a forge where the owner makes custom knives. And he was actually a champion from the TV show Forged in Fire. He was on season eight, episode three. And his name is Walter Barnardsky. And his process was just amazing. Yes, it was. He showed us the whole process. In fact, he actually started one of his knives as a demonstration for all of us. And he showed us step by step how he makes these knives. And it's really, um, it, it really is a practice, and he's very talented to do this. He's self-taught, and it was just amazing to see his workshop. Right, and so let's show you some video of that. Good. Uh, my name is Walter Baranowski, I'm a Season 8, Episode 3, Forge and Fire Champion. And uh, pretty much the full-time bladesmith, and uh, also an American journeyman smith. Journeyman, American Bladesmith Society Journeyman Smith. Well, I'll tell you what, them first three hours on Forge and Fire is the hottest freaking thing I have probably ever put myself in. And I wasn't really so stressed out with what the challenge was. It was more of, I'm in an unfamiliar shop with tools that aren't mine. And I don't know where anything is. Yeah. You got a clock, and it's right there, and it's ticking down, and you're like, don't look at the clock. <laughs> Don't look at that clock. You start looking at the clock, you start going to panic mode. So it's almost a mind over matter thing. You know you can do it. You have, they have more equipment than I got. You can get it done. It's just, so I went in kind of with a mindset that I'm not, yeah, well, this is a competition, but I can't worry about what that guy's right. doing. Yeah. You know, I just got to do what I know I have to do. Do the best you can. Do the best you can. You know, for being a reality TV show, that what they show you on there, that's legit. This is one of my little forges. This is just a one burner. So how uh, about this is good? I could melt steel in that, so probably 2400 degrees. Mm -hmm. So my final piece was, uh, they called it the Sword of Saladin. Which is, you have it, right? No, I don't have it. Thank you. Don't. No, I don't have oh. it. Oh, um, all that work. The Sword of Saladin for 10 grand? Hey, if you keep that, I'll make it. <laughs> The Sword of Saladin is actually known as the Sword of Islam. And the Sword of Islam is, is a, it's a Shamshir sword. You ever see like the old movies with the, you know, like... Uh, Indiana Jones in that one scene? Where kind of, but this was really narrow. This was only an inch and an eighth wide. But it's got this, it's straight for the first two thirds of the blade and it's got this big sweep. And part of the parameters of that blade, if we laid it down on a table with the edge up, the tip touching the table, it had to have it at a minimum three inches from the spine of the knife to the table. That's how they checked it. Um, that sword is mainly a slashing weapon. It's really light, really flexible. First time ever making anything. Like I never that. made a sword like that before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything about my episode in particular, I mean, me and Brian Custis was the other guy that I've gone up against. Like the performance. 
was identical. You know, I think the first test was a ram. His sword cut the ram in half in three hits. My sword cut the ram in half in three hits. Then we went to a chain mail in the shield, and they bashed him off the shields and into the chain mail. Both came out razor sharp after that time. They cut the carpet. The carpet <coughs> test was identical. And then it just, it came literally down to like the most smallest of details. It was, it, yeah, I think it was like one of the closest uh, It was one of the they, closest. Yeah, actually yeah, on yeah. YouTube, if you go on YouTube, Forge yeah. of Fire has their own channel. Um, we made it into like the top five closest calls ever. Everything, oh, yeah. every, I start completely from scratch. Um, so everything from the steel, these guards, I hand make these guards from a raw block of steel. So this is called a color case hard to finish. I'm kind of known in the industry for that. A lot of people use brass, bronze, oh, stainless. Yeah. Gotcha. A lot of people don't do the case okay. hardened guard. Yeah. Case hardening is an old school technique termed mild steel, which really can't be hardened and make it hard. And you get the pretty colors out of it. I get my crazy colors. Now the surface of the steel is hard. It's just as hard as a knife. And I get, I get these fantastic colors that come out. What kind of steel is that? My name is Walter Baranowski. I am a Forge and Fire Champion from Season 8, Episode 3. I'm located in Springville, New York. Um, and I'm also American Bladesmith Society Journeyman Smith. And you can look me up on YouTube, or not YouTube, Facebook as Baranowski Knife and Tool, and also on Instagram. And on TikTok, I am Baranowski Bladesmith, or Blacksmith. <laughs> All, right. All right. It was quite impressive. It, I've never seen anything like ne that. Never seen a knife made before. No. And the work that goes into it, the hours, the craftsmanship. Yeah. yeah. You can see why he's a champion of, you know, of that show. Yeah, and he said he's self-taught. Yeah. So, yeah. But he's a thir third generation? Thir third generation metal worker like yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, he not only does this, plus he also has a full-time job. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he said one knife takes how long? To 40 hours or more, yeah. you know, depending on the knife. And he's got a backlog of a year and a half before yes. he could start a new knife for you. Right. But he will make a knife for you, and it will be the best knife you probably ever own. Right. right. That evening after we got back from the tour of the forge, we had a pizza night. A uh, pizza party where everybody brought their own ingredients and yeah. made their own pizzas and cooked it in a genuine brick pizza oven. Right, wood-fired pizza oven, and it was it was it really was, a lot of fun. It was excellent. I mean, everyone had different ideas for what they wanted for pizza. We made a more traditional pizza with cheese and pepperoni and, and olives, um, but other people did other types of pizzas including unique type of crust all kinds of different things right and Randy also made a pulled pork pizza yeah I thought that'd be fun to share with folks so we did that how's your pizza dear very good the olives are wonderful the next day we went for a hike through a sculpture garden yeah and that was pretty neat um, it was full of different sculptures, probably by more than one artist, but the majority were done by one artist. And it was kind of a nifty place to go and visit and see all the different sculptures. Yeah, and it ended up being about a two mile hike uh, through some hills and such. It was pretty fun. So we'll show you some video of that now. So this is an artist community here. So they have they have uh, cottages and so forth along the creek over here, which are you know for the uh, artists. Nah, this is I mean it's a it's kind of like a working museum. <laughs> well, these are these are like 70 years old. That's another I mean that's another thing. These have, these have been here forever. This is like yeah. the beginning of it. Oh. Yeah.
after we came back, um, Boyd took us a tour of this property. And like Diane said, there's about 155 acres here. And it goes way down this hill where there's some cabins and such. So we went down there and got the whole tour. Yeah, and it runs right along Cataraugus Creek in just in Springville, New York. And the property is a lot wooded, but there are some areas. He's got a couple cottages. One is a log cabin. Log cabin, which is beautiful. And yeah, so he gave us a complete tour of his property. Yeah, he has over five miles of trails on the property, so that was really neat. Um, thankfully, he has a side-by-side um, -side to take his tours on, so that saved a lot of hiking. That was fun. And so we'll show you some video there right now. I see if Randy's got enough room. Enough you on? I got enough room. What we're on right now, I've owned for uh, 24 years. Oh, okay. It's like Jurassic Park now. Oh, <laughs> oh watch out for the dinosaurs. Yeah. You put all this in the pan? Yeah, well, I had it logged a long time ago, uh, about 20 years ago, and so they put them in, but you got to maintain them. You know, that's, that's, that's harder than putting them in. So down here we, we put a pond in. And we got like a little, we call it the Partini Palace. Huh? Here's a sculpture. My little sculpture party. Here's the surprise birthday party. Oh! This is uh, you know, just kind of a cool little entry point landing, whatever. You bring the oh, Adirondack yeah. chairs out here, especially for camping out, you know. Yeah. It's kind of cool. <coughs> oh, and then you have you know, your kayaks and Yeah. And then, you know, so we own down around the corner, and then we own all the way up and around to the, the dam. That's where we're going to go to next. And it's all really good steelhead fishing. So. This was built in, I think, 1948. Conrad Meineke built this. And uh, it was in the Courier Express. They documented the entire build process. So we just, you know, we came from over there at that point. And we went back up and around this bend here. So this is uh, where the way the river's going. And then we went all the way around this bend up to the furthest point you see green on the uh, left-hand side. What is, I mean, what is this? This is the Cataraugus Creek. Okay. So this is a, it's a, it's one of the best natural steelhead spawning creeks on Lake Erie. And, um, and it, you know, flows through Gowanda into, uh, into Lake Erie around Silver Creek. I don't know if that uh -huh. rings yeah. a bell. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But it's, it's, you know, I mean, people canoe it, kayak it. Yeah. They raft it down the ways, you know. And so, like, so they put it up there, that parking area, yep, and then yep, come yeah, right put through it in, here. And it come right through, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. So yeah, that's kind of cool to see because you know, you constantly have this is the, the most popular stretch is putting in here and uh -huh. then taking out at the bar. Yeah. Because oh. you take out and you ha you can have chicken wings and pizza and free yeah. and drink beers and watch a live band. Yeah. You know, it's really pretty cool. So we could actually take a canoe to uh, you know to the bar and have a fish fry on a Friday and not, <laughs> not have to drive until going back home. Right. But yeah, this is kind of a cool area here.
on several of the days we had morning breakfasts, pancake breakfasts, and Boyd and Don do have a salt water in-ground pool, which we're able to enjoy. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. We played games in the pool. Um, never knew there was such a thing as uh, beanbag toss in a pool, but they had one of those and we were playing that. Yeah. A bunch of other games. The pool is also heated, so it was very comfortable. Yeah, yeah, it was wonderful. And in the evenings, we'd all get together and have a happy hour and have a, you know, a few drinks and such before dinner. And one night we had a potluck dinner. Right. But it was really a great time. Yeah, we enjoyed we, ourselves. We really enjoyed ourselves. Tomorrow we'll be headed back home for a few days and um, then off to our next adventure. Get ready for our next adventure. Yep. We invited some friends to this rally. Do you recognize our, our friends here at Love Subin? Hi. Oh, we had a great we time. We had a great time. Yeah, this was a lot of fun, and we really appreciated you guys coming out and joining us here in Western New York. Well, Absolutely, thank you for the invitation. Hometown. And yep. thank you everybody for watching this video. Yep. And until the next time, what should they do, Diane? Subscribe to our channel, Zephyr Travels. Hit the bell for notifications. And until then, we will see, see you down the road. Okay. Bye. bye. See ya. Bye. Good. Okay. Awesome. Hopefully that's good. editable. What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you finished it. That's how we get the bloopers at the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, yeah, he throws it to me all the time, and I'm like, what? What? Okay. okay. Um, and along the way, Randy lost his pocket knife. He believes along the trail. And today, on another tour of the property, they found um, it. They found it. Yeah. So that was nice.